based. So everything that we do on course, so a group of coaches in England come here, we, we, we give content, and they, people can actually mould it to their environment. Because we've got probably people in here who work with under eights, and who work with senior players, who work with females, all sorts. So it's actually moulded to their environment. And what we then do, and there's a bit of mileage involved, we, we go out and visit. So I spend a lot of time in my car, or I did, um, on the bike now. Uh, and I go and visit clubs and coaches and work with them and their players. So I work with the team this morning, Pat and I was there for like 40 to 50 So I go and work with the, co with the coach and for an hour or two, and it's not an assessment, this is for support, is it? We do a couple of them. So that's massive changes. Uh, what else I've written down? Um, we've also we've tried to link with what we call practice to competition training to matches. So I don't know how, again, I don't know how it's done over here, but our level one and two was very much around training. And then we worked out, do you know what? We probably, usually, 50% of the time we have players for training, the other 50% is matches. Can we coach within matches? Can we actually link the two together rather than, right, we'll train, we'll work on a topic, and match that, we'll just try and win. So there's a little bit of a link, link there as well. Um, so that's coach education. In terms of coaching itself, we've changed quite a lot. Uh, we've kind of looked at society in our country and thought, you know what, kids probably aren't playing as much, uh, not practicing as much. I don't know, again, and almost like over here. And, and again, it differs depending on where you know, in, in, we're in England. But generally, they're pretty good at playing football like that, but they don't play as much. Um, so it's, it's adapting our sessions. And you'll see a, a little bit of that come in tonight as to how we've had to adapt. So we call things like, things train has to be game related. So I worked with the group this morning, um, and I, I don't think they stopped playing, did they, Pat, for about an hour and a half, apart from a few interventions that you heard about as well. Let's just get them playing all the time. Good. Um, fortunately for, for me, I can, I can stand there and talk about England DNA, because we've had a good summer. <laughs> we've had a bad summer, I wouldn't have even mentioned it. We've had a decent summer. Um, so I don't know how much you know about that, about our DNA. Two, nearly three years ago, we launched almost like philosophy, because it was kind of, well, Spain were winning things, let's try and copy them. Brazil wins, so let's try and copy them, let's copy the Germans, and then we're always sort of catching up. So one of Pat and I, a friend of ours, Dan Ashworth, actually went in and, and, and put together a, a DNA, if you like. And it's, it's, it's the fruits of it are coming through. The 20s did well, the 21s did okay, the 19s, the women's team, so we, we, we're getting there. So I can proudly say that. Um, these are the five main elements. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it before, but I'll just quickly go through them. So the who we are is kind of, and I think Pat's done a bit with you in terms of your club here, who you are and your identity. And I mean, a load of history here, isn't there, in terms of home farm. Um, so England as a nation, and you know, who we are, what does it mean to play for England, and actually, an England player now is a lot different to an England player 30 years ago and you've got you know, an African lads coming over and, and they're English and this kind of thing. Then the how we play is having a kind of a, that identity, how we play, well, you, you can tell the Spanish team how they play, can't you? Usually the Brazilians, actually over the years, the English probably not. If Crouch was fit, we played long, if he wasn't, we tried to play, it just depends who was good at the time rather than have an identity. So that's the how we play. The future England players, some of the stuff we'll talk about tonight, um, actually what we want players to look at at various age groups, sorry, look like at various age groups, what should an under 10 look like, technically, physically, up there, all the way through. Uh, England have, uh, as I'm sure it's the same there, they have, the earliest week they play for England is under 15, it's the boys anyway. 15, 16, 17 days, 19, 20, 21, senior. And the slogan is, the only thing that really should change is the size of the shirt. So when they first came out under 15s, they should have that kind of natural pathway. Then finally, the how we coach, and we're going to do a lot of that tonight. Um, different ways of coaching, and almost kind of as a nation, or not, not being clones, but having a general way of coaching. So again, if a, a kid starts playing at five years old, the way they coach doesn't differ massively to when they're 15, to when they're 25. And how we how we support at the top level that's your sports scientists, uh, your video men, got one here. Um, you know, massive backroom staff, aren't they? For us guys, it's probably parents, school teachers, other people involved in their, in their, uh, their development. Good. So there's a little exercise so I can shut up. Um, I'm not sure how good your eyes are, so I'm gonna leave them up there. Has anyone seen this before? 
Yeah, single form, good, but not many. Good, that's good. Um, I've written them down, and basically, I've gone number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So if I give you this and it says number eight, it's kind of not every word, but it's the same kind of thing. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to whiz around, I want you to work in twos or threes, and spend two or three minutes discussing what you think it means, what it looks like for you, do you do it, could you do it, etc, etc. So you can't get it wrong. Um, they're what we call the fundamentals, we're, they're ingredients, they're our recipe. So we're not saying every coaching session has to have every single hexagon. What we're saying is, can we take into consideration some of these aspects? All right. So I'll give you that. So, so in your little groups, you can have a little chat around it. When you've kicked the butt out of it, you can grab another one. There you go.
it was a 3v3. There's a couple of keepers, so we did a little target game. So you know that bit where you get there, we all, you know, we all come from work, everyone's there, and you don't want them whacking balls about. No. And actually just get them to do something where they don't need us as players. They, they, they'll play that all day. And they did. I could once. And, and during that time, what happened what was that I then went and sat up a pitch. I could set the pitch up, I could have a look at the level, I could have a look at the numbers, work out who's there and who's not. They didn't need me at all. So it's an arrival activity. And then what I did, we did this kind of mirror practice. Maybe you can see that right. I've darkened it. Um, mirror practice, so you have the same practice going on there and there at the time. And then when we did that for about 40 minutes, we just played a game. So I actually didn't have to take the cones up at all. I think we took the little ones up, but we didn't need to. So it's that carousel approach of going from one to the other, like you say, so you're not ripping it all up and picking cones up. And just, just keep yourself busy for five minutes and rushing around sweating and putting cones down again. And actually that smooth transition. So that's, that's the idea of the, the carousel. So like you said, that carousel approach. Because um, the last thing we want to be doing is, is rushing around, getting a sweat and putting cones down. So. Certainly that, if it's not something you do, it's, it works really well, arrival activities. Especially for younger kids, where actually they don't need to warm up, maybe as such. That could be a woman. I am not under eight years full house room yet. They might do. But if you've got little ones, the first thing they do maybe is a little kind of game related stuff. Good, excellent. Well, that's a good point. Any others that you need a bit of um, clarity on the word? Because some of it's a bit academic word, isn't it? Uh, I, I wasn't sure, but so we weren't sure about uh, game-related practices. Were they, were they meant with the word game as in fun yeah. or preparing for match? Okay. So we weren't sure what they meant about that. But obviously, if it's, if it's game, we meant with fun yeah. things to make them feel like not actually training, that they're having a bit of crack and so on, but they're actually yeah, relevant. And then the match then is obviously shape and so yeah. on. They, these two. I'm going to go into a bit more detail, so we'll park that. That's all right, we'll park that and we'll, we'll do that. It's a big part of it. When I said we change, our coaches change, they're probably the two, which is the biggest change, so we'll park that. What, um, did, who got this one? Transition. What, what, what came out in the discussions around that? Uh, I thought when you mentioned there that the, the transition to the, uh, the warm and the training. We were talking about maybe that was a transition from training to try, you know, get that onto the football pitch. You know, okay. Match. Could be, yeah. It could, could be, you know, it could be a transition between age groups, transition from training to matches. If I was to say that um, it's more around the game itself, what's transition within a game? Yeah, but, 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 yeah. yeah. If I was to yeah. coach the oh, kid, hang on a minute. If you're playing a game with, the two, with two teams, yeah. and let's say one of the teams goes and scores a goal, yeah. I'll try and say, right, now that's transition to defence. So instead of looking in the back of the net going, what a goal, set up quickly, because the other team are coming at us now, we want, we're now going into defensive mind, so we might go a little bit tighter. Brilliant. Excellent. So transition, defence attack, attack defence. So what we've, we've kind of, when this was designed, if you look at your matches, Schoolboy school matches, transition happens a lot, doesn't it? A hell of a lot. There's an argument that says that if you go to the levels, it happens less. But to be fair, the Premier League, the hustle and bustle and fast pace, there's a lot of transitions there. And maybe over the years we, we might have neglected it, transition in training. The example I give is so if we're doing a, uh, an attacking practice and work on the attacker, I've got a ball, I've got to take on part and score. And maybe in the past, Maybe we've, we've done that. Pat tackles me, game over. Well done. Yeah, yeah. So what what do you want Pat to do with the ball in a game? If he's made, made, if he made, he made, he brilliant. Attack. attack. What do you want me to do? Run back. So actually, have we neglected it in our practices for so long that it's not it's not natural? We sometimes the defender yeah, kick out of play. Well, what do you want to do that for? We wouldn't do that. Anymore. Similarly today, it happened a couple of times in, in this practice here, the keeper saved it and it was almost like the game was dead. It's not, is it? Play on. Because what do you want your fullbacks to do? Boom, boom. Like I said. So it's, it's, it's having elements of transition in practice. Because otherwise we're not preparing players for the game. Because all of a sudden, match day comes and there's transitions everywhere. 
So that's a real, uh, again, a big, big change in how we've been doing things. So the, the practice now is that I've got to take you on. Uh, if I can't get by you, you've got to try and drive over that line. I've got to try and stop it. And that's, that's running back and forth, that's the game. Good. Good. Any others there? They probably, you've probably picked the main, the main talking points. What about? Yeah, is that the fifth one? Connection with the player, the yeah. section. Okay. Outlining the aims, the objectives, and specific uh, targets. Yeah. You know, some of the times it, what happened is you get a coach that probably won't tell you, won't tell a boy that this is what we're aiming for. Yeah. They bring them out, give them the stupid two, two or three, and it's a coach that probably not, you know, he's not really uh, motivated enough, maybe he's just as much to do it. Yeah. But something like that, you know? Yeah, it was an old school. Men you know how you yeah. do it. They reckon if you didn't tell them what you were doing and they knew what you do at the end, you succeed. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's the way it used to years ago. So you never told them what you were going to do. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just the way I haven't done it. Yeah, I remember being told that. Yeah, yeah. don't tell them what to do. <laughs> well, if you think of teaching, I don't know if anyone's in the teaching profession, but the first thing you've got, if offset come, the first thing that has to be on the board is your aims and objectives. Yeah. But otherwise you get, you get down well, right. One of the philosophies now that we're doing with the FAO is that saying if you're going to do a game, you show them the full picture at the start and then you start to break it down okay. so that they can understand you're doing this because we want you to do right. what we showed you at the start yeah. and then you build it back up again. Brilliant. We call it whole part whole, is that what they call it? Have you heard that expression, whole part whole? Have anyone heard that? I said sorry. Whole part whole. I knew what I said, we won't get outside because we've got a lot of time. It's good, it's good. So, whole part whole is a new way of um, maybe coaching. It's not the only way. And it comes from um, individual sports. So, I think this is what you're referring to. So, <clears throat> the way of coaching might be the first thing kids do when they get there, I and mean, this will be alien to some of us, is after a warm up, we have a match. The start of the match. Well, I don't know about you, I was always used to match as a bit of a behaviour management carrot. You can have a match if you're good. I'd always give them a match. But start with a match, and that's kind of your initial assessment. They're going to teach and talk. You, you, you're working on pass and receiving tonight, and I'm going to look and I'm going to say for 10 minutes, where are they up to with pass and receiving? They're not bad. Okay, he needs a bit of work, she needs a bit of Then what you do is you break it down, and you coach specific parts of that. That's your session. And then you give another arch and you see hopefully they got better at it. Simple as that. It came from swimming. Um, and the analogy, I'm, I don't know much about swimming, is if I asked you to, to do the front crawl, I'd have a look at your technique and then I'd think, well actually your, uh, your, your, your arms are right, your, your legs are. See, so you can tell I'm clear how I was swimming. <laughs> your legs aren't doing very well. So I'll give you a float. So that's the whole, I'll give you a float and we work on a part of your technique. Well, that part is obviously going to be the legs. We work on that and the legs, and then after a while, take the float away and you do the, the, the technique. <coughs> kind of brought that into football. Do you think kids like that? Yeah. 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 So, some children, you have, to, you, have to, you have to get at them. Yeah. You, know, you have to let them know beforehand. Yeah. You know, young kids. Because it, it's not up here, you know. Go on, what was that? Oh, no, we're just having a sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, we're saying, you're saying yeah, yeah. we do a match and then tell them where they're going wrong and they do a match again and they said they'll still do it wrong. Who's <laughs> 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 <It's> false, that? <laughs> One of the things, I don't know about you, but a lot of the questions we get over the years we've, we've, we're asked for kid, by kids is when are we having a match? Yeah. Yeah. It's love it to turn around and say, well, nah, go on, figure out. <laughs> Motivation levels are high. Because kids come to training to play football. If the first thing they want to do is play football, you've got them in your pocket. Mm -hmm. But actually, we're going to break it down. However, that may be, we'll break it down and then we'll have a game again. So it's, it's, it's one way. It works. It might work, it might not. Um, you'll find that time management will improve. Kids will not be late to training. Come on, we start with a match, do not be late. Because it's a warm up, it's fine. Absolutely. So I don't, I hope, I hope, I don't know if that's where yeah, you're finding it. Yeah, yeah, don't know what we're talking about. Um, yeah, so you, you, yeah. this bit, and it links to what you said earlier about um, football's a complex game, isn't it? In possession, out of possession, transition, there's all sorts. So, not trying to coach the whole game, but having objectives for the session. Not just the session, but you remember what I said at the start, actually linking it to match day. Wednesday night, we're working on counter attacking from deep. 
So we're going to do a practice on it. We're going to work on it this time. We're playing kind of last side, St. Kevin's on Sunday. <laughs> Big game. <laughs> They're not bad, so we're going to we're going to try and we're going to try and win. We're also going to work on counterattacking from deep. That might be because actually looking long term as well as short term, that will improve. through. So it's how our aims and objectives. Um, good. Last one I want to talk about before we move on is because it gives a bit of, a bit of a talking point. Is, is this one? Who had that one? What is it? Seventy percent ball rolling time. Yeah, what I'm asking for is that name. What? So anyone have an idea of aim for a minimum of seventy percent ball rolling time in sessions? Lots of touches of ball, ball passing in use. Okay. Yeah. And Lots of touches of ball. ball. Go on. Any? It's, it's something I alluded to at the start about society. And do you know what? About an active. Keep them active, keep them active, don't have mistakes for it. Pretty much. Keep moving around. Each here being in control of, of, the, of their own body. It goes back to that transition thing just keep them moving, yeah. keep them it, rolling through things. It, yeah, it is. More, more that than, than it's not just the ball each stuff. It's, so I'll give you an example. Maybe 25, 30 years ago, um, maybe a kid would play so much football throughout the week, they go from school, they go out for two hours, they come back for tea, they go out again, they come back when it's dark, or after it's dark, get in trouble, and they play hours and hours of football. So when they came to a, an organised training session run by an adult, it didn't matter too much if they weren't running around too much, because they're getting all the other stuff, the gameplay and all that, the physical stuff. We're seeing it doesn't happen now. So we're actually seeing that if, if they come to our practices, they need to run around. So this bit here is basically a nice way of saying, shut up coaches and let them play a bit. That's a nice way of saying it. So, do you like that? <laughs> <laughs> so, but again, it's a guide. So if it's, if, now if it's, it's probably won't happen here, if it's 90 degrees in the summer, <laughs> you've all rolled the time, might be 50%. More likely, it's minus 10. December, if you're ball rolling time might be 90 percent. I would suggest Pat this morning ball rolling time. 70, 80. I think 80 percent. 80 percent. Um, just wanted to get a play. And do you know what? They worked so hard that they, I knew they were learning while they were playing. They put the effort in. So it's something to actually. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of a measure. And, and, and when it first came out. Some coaches ask their colleagues to, to time them. So an hour, this is how geeky I am, 42 minutes, that is. Can you get the ball rolling? Can you get them playing for 42 minutes of your hour session? So what would eat into your, to your playing time? What would eat, we've already talked about that. Set up, yeah. Pitch. Pitch. Oh, yeah. Good, so you're changing the pitch. What else? Older kids and warm up. Yeah, sorry? Demonstrations. Good, so you're coaching itself. And that's where coaches become hard now, because we want to get stuff over to them, we want to talk to them. Well, you don't want to feel them. Oh, right. Exactly. Rapid non. Exactly. Kids are losing concentration. What is it? Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so knowing when, prioritising when to go and talk to them, and when to just leave it and park. Mm. So it's, it's an interesting one. I don't know what your thoughts are about it, but this is, this is all the way to the top. This is under 21's senior team. The ball, they need the ball, they may not see any team, but they're certainly the youth teams. Ball rolling. It's, it's Roy does, it comes back to society as well because in the olden days, myself and myself, we were always, in, even in social circumstances, we always were made to share stuff. Nowadays, every kid's got their own iPad, every kid's got their own PlayStation, so everyone, every kid, it's not far away well now, every kid's yeah, charging yeah. on yeah. their own PC, etc. Yeah. So now we're taking all that, yeah. the, the philosophy of one is, is great, because it's taking all that again and trying to go back to the hospital. Because so. you've only got to look at other nations, and unfortunately, you bet your life the South Americans are still playing for five, six hours a night, mm -hmm. and we wonder why they're technically back. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not preaching, I don't want to preach. <laughs> but that's, that's where we go with things. So, any other, so they, as I say, they kind of. We'll talk about the four corner model in a bit. I uh, know you think you had that at the back, four yeah. corner model. Um, you might have come across that before. We'll talk about that. But they're ingredients. So like I said, we're not expected to, as coaches in England, we're not expected to, to tick every single one. But it gives, it gives an idea, that, you know, with your plan and you can kind of um, 
give you a bit of a basis. Good. We'll come back to them later. Uh, very, very quickly. Um, so we talked about this. This is how we coach now. You've got in possession, out of possession, and transition. We don't call it attacking and defending because we just think that defending is not cool. People hate defending. They probably learn to hate out of possession as well. But for the moment, it's new. So you've either got the ball, you're out, or it's that split a few seconds. And then we've got what we call the principles of play, which I'm sure you're um, familiar with, but we've changed them a bit. And we worked with the lads this morning, they were fantastic. So the first um, principle of attack is to penetrate the opposition. Can you play forward? So we talked to them, didn't we, about maybe playing over them, playing through them, playing around them, driving them the ball, combining, all those technical components on the right hand side. So we just we try and get coaches, even at level one, First time they're in the game is, is coaching to those principles. So if a five-year-old starts playing football, well you might not call it penetration, you call it try and play football. And by the time they're 15, they'll almost have a tattoo on their brain. Principles of attack. Principles of defending, can we get a press on? Brilliant. If we can't, can we slow it down, delay it? What's happening behind me? Compactness, cover, support. This one's coming to the into the new coach end because of the, the nature of the game, control and restraint. What would you understand with that be? Yeah. Try, we call it trying to win the ball clean. In other words, trying to pick someone's pocket, anticipate, step in and start an attack. Rather than Tony Adams, Stuart Pearce, pull, take it. Because you can't do it now. And it will be worse in 10 years' time. So we're, we're trying to get a bit more control. I suppose the Italians have done it for years, haven't they? They've the masters of the thing. Good. And then we usually spend half an hour trying to work out why nobody's put tapping on there. Because surely there's, there is room for tapping, but we won't do that tomorrow. <laughs> okay, good. Um, right, I'm going to have a little bit of a task for you. I want you to talk about, this is where it comes into your question about the game related stuff. I want you to, in your small groups, Come up with um, a definition for a game. Is that good football? A game. What is a game? All right, so whether you want to use buzzwords or a definition, you use Google if you want. That's what people do now. <laughs> You've got two minutes. What is a game? Where you go. Richard, challenge. You met your best, your best. Challenge. Enjoy. No, you're not on PM. Enjoy. 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 Best on the back. Uh, we, we, we found that the game is progression. You have to aim to progress to the next stage. That's all I think that's something you can gain to follow the progression. Well, to progress, if you win, you progress. Yeah, it's all about the edge. If you lose, you progress. Go on, what's that last one? Having an edge. Having an edge. You're going to have the next stage. I'm trying to get one word for that. Progress. Progression. Progression. Okay, like that. I know what you mean. Uh, guys, hit. Fun. Fun? Good. Challenge. Brilliant. Getting harder now. Next one. 
Okay. You got some good ones in the back. Any others?
We've got a screen in midfielder, we have a load of bodies. A front two, a couple of midfielders. So the, the zeros have to try and score, and then same thing happened there as well. They have to try and score, but the X's have to try and drive into there or pass into one of their mates when they score. So you keep scoring. How long did they play it for, guys? Probably 40 minutes? Easily, yeah. No, Easily, yeah, yeah, yeah. And not once did their motivations drop because it was a game. So thinking about that, this stuff here was a game. Stop the ball on the line. Played for about 10 minutes. So just thinking about it, see all the stuff you do, is it a game? Is it kind of a winner or lose? Does that make sense? Ish. Good. Okay, last bit before we I'll shut up again. So let's take it further, and this is more to do with the game related stuff now. What would you say an invasion game is? What makes something an invasion game? Getting better for the team. I'll come back to you on the other yeah. Go on. Getting better for the team. Getting better for the other team, yeah, so it's a team, usually a team sport. Go on. The territory, yeah. So you're going into the opposition's territory. Yeah. And try and defeat them. And at the same time, defend your army. Brilliant. Protect your warriors. So, so invasion games over here. What, do you, what invasion games do you play here? There's quite a few of us. I mean, top sports. Yeah, sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So you think of the Spanish who did so well for years. The other sports they play are basketball, invasion game, handball, invasion game, and futsal, which is very similar to football. It's all invasion games. We play cricket over in our place. Not invasion games. Not, the, the, the skills aren't transferable. We like fishing as well, it certainly isn't. So thinking now as well, can it be a game, but also can it be game related, i.e. defending the territory, attacking the opponent's territory? So that's where we're going with things now. It's a bit of a whistle stop tour of our new level one. So imagine games, uh, tactics involved, transferable skills, positions come into it, don't they? So it's all, you can see how it's all kind of linking together. So you've got your in possession, out of possession, transition, evasion games. <coughs> Trying to play the goal at each end, so everything's transferable. That's our kind of uh, very wordy definition of a game related practice. So, realistic activity, something that would happen on match day. Would it happen on match day? If it wouldn't, what's the point of doing it? So, would it happen? Which fits being the DNA, realistic relevance, the player's format of the game. So, this today, so to Pat, what the lads, what formation do they play? Well, the play, one team plays a back three, one plays a back four, fine. So we play a back three. You play two up top, yeah, and we'll do that. So we, we, we link it to the format of the game. If I was working with Litlands, you play seven a side, you'd probably have a back two. So everything's linked, and everything's transferable, you're not just chucking a load of bodies on a pitch. It should involve constraints conditions, we'll talk about that another time. And enable the principles of play to be coached within it. So, what we did this morning with 20 minutes attacking principles. Play forward if you can. Create space. Move. Support. Be creative. It's all kind of linking together. And guess what? If you do all that, you naturally get 70% ball rolling against the games. Okay. Um, a couple more bits, and then we're going to ask you to do a bit of planning. Um, Pat's asked me to talk to you a little bit about this. It's a very simple model, I don't know if it's something you've, you've, you've seen, I think it was one of the fundamentals actually. Plan do review. I would suggest, again, I'm generalising, but we quite like that, don't we, planning? We like the planning sessions, don't we? It's not we do with planning. And we like the doing. But maybe, and it's only a maybe, maybe in the past, if this bit's gone wrong, we just go, oh, that's crap, I'll do that again. Excuse my language. Rather than saying, what, well actually why did it go wrong? Reviewing it thoroughly, well, what can I do? Well, there's you know, the one of those space, the two bodies, or this, or that, it was a bonus. 
reviewing it to then plan again. So it's that cycle. It says on the DNA to, to spend equal time planning, doing, and review. I think I'm not sure that's achievable. Not if you're a part time coach like, like we are. We, we haven't got an hour to plan, an hour to do, and an hour to review. It'd be nice if we did. But maybe just it should be worded um, something along the lines of give equal importance to all three. So the review is really, really important rather than written up and starting it. Because your review will be the start of your next plan. Our old level one was four, we have 14 games that come on course, you guys come on course and we give you 14 games and you learn off by heart and deliver them. And then when you, the trouble is you go, go away and then you, you get through all 14, run out and think well, what now? And then just revert to the norm. What we're doing now in level ones and twos is, is giving you the skills to develop your own games and actually you have a go at the game, you review it and say I'm going to try again and I'm going to kick it on a bit further. And we're going to get three or four weeks' work out of one game. And that makes it into not flip flopping, doesn't it? Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, remember going to maths and you wouldn't do algebra one week and then leave it for months. You do it one week, two weeks, three weeks, and then you might nail it, then you might do subtraction. Two, three. So it's same before. And so we like at the top, both training sessions and match days should be planned. Do we plan match days? Of course we plan the win, do we plan them? I don't know. I never used to. What's the, what's the theme of today? Guys, we've got men here. We've got two measures of success today. One measure will be how the score, naturally, and it should always be. But the, the other measure of success is how we do a counter attack. So after the game, we drew two two well up, how do we get on a counter attack? And then we we'll review it, and that starts our planning for the next session. Well, actually, we, we defended far too deep. We can then get out. So we need to talk. About. You see how it's linked? It's a little bit silly. I think it's something we, you want to probably introduce a bit more thoroughly, but that is as the time goes on. Right? Well, it's, it's just, it's just go on. on that as well. Like, we thought together for our team was that we'd set targets for in our game. So we'd say, right, we've got one, I want shit, six shots on target at that time. If we didn't achieve it, why didn't we achieve it? Brilliant. Was it because we were too deep? Or we're not creative enough, and then we go back and review it. Fantastic. It's a spot, spot, that's what we're going to get. Yeah. Spot. So it's, it's another measure of success, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Measuring that success. Brilliant. Good. It's already in place. What else have we got? Have you seen the four corner model? It's the last bit for me, and I'm going to show Have you seen this model or not? No. Okay, good. It's pretty good. Uh, it underpins everything we do in Coach Ed, and you'll see how it links to it. So we've got a four corner model. The four corners are technical corner, psychological, physical, social. And what we're saying is that maybe over the years, years gone by, we've, we've spent a hell of a lot of time on this side of the board, but maybe neglected the psychological and social side of it. For me, a drill ticks the technical and physical side. A drill. I'm not saying drills are bad, but I don't think I'm saying, I'm saying we're getting away from them. Because in a drill you ain't got to make decisions. You do as the coach tells you. So you don't have to use your brain, you just have to remember where to go. And usually drills aren't very social, because it's not that fun element of winning and losing, etc. So if you think of a game without like practice, you're going to get loads of technique, technical stuff. Whatever you're focusing on, dribbling, receiving, etc. You're going to get loads of physical stuff because it's a game. But you're also going to get players using the brains. And there's a social element as well, which is one of your bits here, wasn't it? So, yeah. So we quite often use, I get coaches to use that as a tick list, as a review. Review session, did it tick all those boxes? Sometimes they, do you know what, it didn't really tick the green box. So players weren't able to make decisions, it was too kind of regimented. So we review, we then start your next plan. How can we make it more fit for purpose in that corner? It's been aimed at us as, as a, a English players is that we're technically good, but we're awful decision makers. And I'll probably go along with that. 
Don't know. Game management is poor. Not a lot. Wrong with our technique. Some of our players, but game management over the years is poor. And maybe that's a product of, of how we coach them. We drill them. You look at it. I've got a system of football that you have. Yeah. You know, it's a fresh day sandwich and it's not presented as a big support. I think you're also nearly as a big company to help for it. I think so. I think you hit the nail on the head with the word you used. Drill. You don't drill a kid and tell him that's what you do. You give him certain skills and then you let him see the best skill for the best whatever moment he's caught in the pitch. It's not, you don't drill him and that's what you have to do. Do you know what I mean? It gets a lot of talk it's a big talking point at the moment. Oh, yeah. Big talking point. But remember, we're talking youth development, aren't we? So the problem we have over in social media and over here, I'm sure, is Man City will do a drill, first team, and someone will put it on there and go, see, what's wrong with drills? Hang on. We're in youth development. You're not telling me that um, uh, Silk Dan and Silva learned to be what? That player by being drilled. He learned by playing. Never make mistakes. Yeah, I'm not make the same mistakes twice. Absolutely. Now he's at the top of his game, and actually to refine his movement technique, yeah, drills work fine. But people don't get that. They, they, they take that and think, well, we need to drill kids. So, yeah, it sounds like a sing off the same game sheet. You'd be amazed some people are against it still. And I tell you what, the struggle with coaches, uh, I don't know if you can relate to this, is if you drill, if you drill kids, we're in control, aren't we? If you let them play a bit and it's game related, you get an element of chaos. And coaches find that hard, I don't know how you find it. They find it hard and if you've lost control, it's like, what can mum's and dad's think of a session? Because it's kind of a bit, mm -hmm. yeah. So you, you might see one practice on one side of the pitch where everything's straight and linear and <coughs> neat and tidy. And mum's and dad's like, that's brilliant. There's no learning taking place. You might look messy on that side. So it's just being brave. Can you relate to that a little bit? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Embrace the chaos for yourself. But some find it hard. So there's another bit on the four corners. I don't even see that in the back of so sorry. Uh, similar, stuff. similar stuff. So there's the target. But to develop technique. But whilst improving movements, learning the game, and enjoy it. All linked. Exactly the same model. Have you ever done insights? Have you? So insights? Have you ever done insights? So insights based on yourself. Okay. So it's exactly the same model. So same part cut as yours. I have to take from you. Hey, one minute. I didn't do this. Hang on. Hang on. He's got four four of four trainers. <laughs> So the yellow is someone who's born, they're gone. The, the red is the business or yourself. It's usually someone who's a director, a bit of a leader. The green can be can be outgoing at times, but can be a bit of a thinker as well. Uh, it doesn't be introvert and a bit of an extrovert as well. And then this comes down to someone who's quite dark, who uh, wants all the small details, who wants to know everything about the room, the room, the room, etc. Et Gary, I hate your runners. You made them yourself. He goes to bed with them, I'd say. For some reason. Right, keep threatening and saying it's the last bit for me, but I keep forgetting it. So, the cup, one more thing. Pat's asked me to talk about this, and it's quite topical. Well, first of all, I'll give you a minute in your small groups. What's the difference between an intervention and a coaching style? Go. Like one minute. What's the difference? An intervention and a coaching style. What's the difference between an intervention and a coaching style? Oh, yeah, that's. <laughs> 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 no? Go on, then. Can we zoom into it? We're starting a lot of time. Maybe too quickly, you know. Okay. So the intervention is, is oh, it <coughs> So what's your coaching style? The coach style is that I think you need to, you know, the, the kids need to maybe come back to you or you ask them why the thing you're doing this, sir, and you know what benefit is it for them? You know what 
they get the problem. So they can explain to you. Good. But you spot. And it's important that we know the difference. So now that 70% more wrong with things come out, we've got to be really creative with our interventions. So in Coach Edge years ago, and when I came up through the badges, it was stop, stand still, and listen to this. Yeah. Those of you who play, I'm sure a lot of you, do you remember the old stop, stand still, and you think, oh shit, it's me. <laughs> oh, it's not me. Oh, I can see it, I'm alright. And then the coach would talk to someone over there, had nothing to do with me. By eating into my poor rolling time, on board, I'm on a plane. Yeah. We've had to be creative now. So an, examples of interventions might be to stop the whole practice. That's still there. If it's something that um, the coach feels will benefit the whole group, then you stop the whole practice. Not a That's an intervention. Stop. Boom. It might be, to, and we don't do enough, I don't think. When we stop the whole group, it's always to correct something. Sometimes the best intervention is, oh, stop! That was brilliant. Just tell me and show me what you did there. All of a sudden, that stops until it's not a good word. It's like, oh, yeah, okay. okay. It might be a drive by. So, I know Neil's name now, so I'm picking him. So, the game, the ball's rolling, they're playing. I'm just going to speak to Neil about actually trying to use, use your other foot. Yeah, okay. I've got you right there. So, that little drive by. Allow the practice to continue, but communicate with individuals or units. So these two are playing the centre half together and might talk to them as a unit. Okay. You might take an individual out of the practice and communicate with them. That's an intervention. I'm intervening, but I'll let you not carry on. Come in here, let's have a look at someone else who's using that with you, for example. Probably today, I think this morning, I think the fourth one down is, is how I intervene the most. I said to the boys, you're going to play for four minute bursts, and I'm going to then I'm going to give you a 30 second breather and I'm going to talk to you in that breathe. And I found that worked. I did it a couple of times. I just found them really, really engaged. I thought I might as well use it. I did a bit of drive-by. I did a bit at the top one, but the main intervention was taking advantage of natural breaks in play to address the individuals. If the ball flies off for a throw, and you know the lad's going to take 20 seconds. You utilise that time. Try not to stop the play. That's an intervention. And similarly with water break. You're not the only one. Stop sound still. One look and you'll be in there and then at that moment passes your boy and the box. I think the, the, the message was lost from coaching courses and it sounds like it's, it's over here yeah, as well. Absolutely. Because actually the stop stand still was only really introduced for coach education courses. So it was thought that all you do is producing coaches at nine years old. <laughs> well you've got to shoot, you've got to do it. Um, the lad this morning who was answering the questions, yeah. to be fair, he then went on the pitch and, and did it. Because at first I thought, we know who he answered, but can he play? He did it right. Good. Okay. I just want to, I've, I've chucked loads of stuff at you. Some, some you either know, some maybe some new content. I just want you to spend 10 or 15 minutes planning a session together. Um, we were going to go and kind of deliver it, I just don't think we'll have time, it'll be a bit messy, so I'd rather spend 15 minutes in planning. I want you to maybe do something you've not done before and take on some of this stuff. So you might have a look, I'll leave this, this slide up with all these. So what's your own objective? What is your topic, specific topic? Is it counter-tapping? Thinking about your carousel approach when you're designing your practice. Thinking about the intervention, this, that, the other. Just take what we've spoken about tonight. It might be that you plan the last session you did and try and make it better, or the next session you're going to do. If you're coaching this week, it might be a bit of planning time for you. But just work as a two or a three just to plan a session in or out of possession. Does that make sense? Happy? And is it a game? Can you make it to a game? So use the flip charts. There's some more paper up here if you want. If you want to split it off, quite informal. Or what time does it happen? Eight o'clock for all green and green. This one. Do you want more flip chart? You've got through a lot. Do you want to break it off? Drop it. Yeah. That's no excuse.
Right, so Normally you'd have to communicate it because you're running the blind side to the player right. in possession. There's no point in doing it if he doesn't know about it. Absolutely. Because he might use it or he might not use it. But if he knows you're there, he might fake and go inside. So there's all sorts going yeah. on. When you've actually overlapped, it's happened, the overlap's happened, what then? Well, where do you want to receive the ball? Well, hopefully in front of you or at your feet. What are you going to do with it then? So it's breaking that down. So that a lot of, whatever your topic is, there's a lot to it. So maybe by doing before, during, and after, it's quite it's quite a good way of breaking down the information. Because mm -hmm. we spend a lot of time on this, but unless we get that right, they ain't going to get it. <laughs> anyway, we, we digress. Uh, and then the other one was social. So does your game, I always think, would you like to play it? We talk about drills, and I've, I've seen coach with drills, and I've gone, would you like to do that? And they've gone, oh, really? Don't do it then. Do something that you think, yeah, I'd like to do that. And you can gauge from body language coming, whether players are enjoying it and they're focused. I mean, this morning, I think I could have, they could have carried on for another hour and they were just buzzing. Just because they were playing. So, um, yeah, just a little check. Right, um, for two minutes I want you to just think about, you can do this on your own, as a pair, as a small group, just think about maybe one light bulb moment from tonight, this is probably two more lessons after this. So I want you to think about the last hour and a half, is there anything that sticks in your mind you think, you know what, one thing I'll take that away, a little light bulb moment. Jot it down if you want, think about it, because we're going to pick on people in a minute. And it can stand out from tonight. Uh, the attitude. Your attitude as a coach. Like, if you're not happy, then that's Okay, so the um, first like linking to number one, isn't it? Being having a positive, enthusiastic manner at all times. That's not easy sometimes, is it? We've got a bad day out of So, coaching manner. I think it's our mood reflects on players, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Good. Guys. I'd say the whole part and whole part of the sponsor. Um, normally we've been doing a part and whole part of it, but not the whole you know. <laughs> Yeah, we've been doing that. Yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it has to be equal time. You know, you've got now 20, 20, 20. Your whole might be five minutes at the start. Yeah. Yeah. Try it. Let them make all the same for us. What this gives you is, although you know your players, the first hole gives you a, like I say, gives you an idea of where they're at. You can sometimes plan stuff and then we do it. <coughs> Actually, they can do this. It's not stretching them. Or it's too hard for them. So it's, it's gauging where they're at. It, it works quite well. Um, it's one way of doing it. Good. Uh, guys in the middle? Or yeah. uh, rolling? Yeah. What was it? What percent? Uh, so just being mindful of that as coaches and to Good. Fellas at the back. Um, I suppose for for myself and Declan, we think a team, sort of a team before the you know, has an idea what you want to work in and in regards to, to the team, you know, what they need to work on and then build a team that night, you know, ready to develop a session that night and develop. And stick to it so it develops. So, aims and. I don't know where that. Aims and objectives is something yeah, like that. It's having a focus, a focus. Focus, yeah. Because yeah. it's, it's so tempting just to try and affect everything, isn't it? And then post the whole game. And there's, so much, there's, there's, there's so much to fix. You know, they are kids learning, so Absolutely. we've got to sort of maybe pinpoint, say, the next so, so many weeks, okay, there could yeah. be a bigger thing we can work on. Maybe tonight, as well as working in that little spot with the things with the pass, and just generally we need to work on this. And then the nice thing about game related stuff is that the, the, the byproduct of game related stuff is they're going to get loads of good stuff anyway. They're, they're playing football. But you're actually focusing on one particular thing. So that's, that's good. Good. Uh, something different, you guys? Um, yeah, we're just saying add a bit of have a winner or a competitive edge to, to train. Yeah. And it does up the intensity and up the interest as well. 
Definitely. I think you guys do it well over here, though. Whenever I come over, I say, ah, I can't believe the intensity of the Irish trainer. Honestly, the trainer, they really, from when I first come over, I've been coming a while now. You, more so than the English boys and girls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's true, it's true. You, you, they seem to train at a really high intensity from what, from what I've seen anyway. But yeah, they can always be, be better. Yeah, yeah. I think as, uh, as coaches, we generally have the games, we, are, we generally plan to be able to do uh, within our games. Um, obviously, if the result cause it even better. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. But I think in training, we, we obviously plan and do, but we don't think we're doing much of the owners' coach. Yeah. To be honest. So I'll probably to make more time for ourselves. For the field, the field, the field. It's hard, isn't it? Yeah. So it's this side of it, from the training. <laughs> You might even feedback from players is always good with us. I don't know, I don't know how good we are at that. It sometimes hurts. <laughs> what do you think of the session? <laughs> Why is it crap? But by asking players, it's, it's a good way to review. Other, otherwise, it's just you reviewing it. If you want to work with a coach. So what on the on the level one now? They they have a lot of reviewing to do, and after the session, they're asked to go away and reflect. So you'll be coaching as a group of three and you'll self-reflect. Then you'll go and sit over lunch with this group who played in this session and they'll give you some feedback and then I'll give you some feedback. So all of a sudden your review is made up of self-reflection, peer reflection and tutor reflection, which is probably a bit over, overkill. Mm -hmm. But by then, you've got a good idea what you're going to do next time. Good. Anything else? Anyone want to pick out? That's maybe stuck game, I want you to put down game and capital. It's just from each session to, to be to have, to have fun in them or to, just to be so the, the game the game, the game and then per, on a personal level just we, you, you touched on coaching style like yeah. I can come across and I know I do maybe slightly aggressive so yeah. I, don't, I don't want to be an aggressive coach with kids like I want to be, have a good coaching style yeah. so I don't want to give the kids the answers I want to tease it out of them and don't want to be that you know the the one in the ad where your man is standing on the sideline yeah. screaming at the kids. It's a well done, but what could you have done better? Yeah. Well, what, positive culture style. Yeah, that's, 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 that's good. The, the bit about teasing it out of them, patience is, is the. They know the answers passion. anyway. Yeah. Most of them. Yeah, that's, that's good. Or like when you ask them, you know, after a match, what, what do you think we could have done? Some of them will just say something stupid like pass the ball back. Do you know what I mean? No, Think about what could we do now? Yeah, yeah. You know? Like, well, I suppose like, I should have just kicked it away. I should have looked for a player, maybe pass it. So, no, don't panic. So, any pressure the kid to have on them, if they put it on them themselves, so they get the body, they might just kick it away. Take that five seconds to look and pass it. Pass we actually, on that, we, the last workshop of our new level one is around match day, and we, we're, after, we, we're saying to them that try and avoid it, the half time team talk being. You as a coach talking at players. Mm. Actually, like you said, try and get them to own that half time team talk mm. a little bit. The skill then is to facilitate it and, mm. and eke out answers. Even giving them five minutes after. I guarantee every team here when the match is over, you come in and you tell them what you're doing and see us later. Spend five minutes having a warm down. Yeah. You, you talk to each other. Because no one does it. No one does it. I've done, that, I've done that approach, but because of Championship Manager and FIFA, they all think they're experts. So they you, <laughs> Don't wheel the tower. They all, you know, they all want to go 4-4-3. Four, four, that's not bad. They want to it? play wingers and everything. Yeah. You're saying, okay, let's just take a step back for a second. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing, though, isn't it? I know it's, like, it's our job to manage it, but it's good they've got the team. Good. Cool. Um, I think just, the, uh, go on, sorry, the four corners. Uh, uh, the four corners, yeah, the four corners, yeah. yeah. I was having talking to the person the social side of the media, you know? Yeah. And we're being in a game and you have a you know? Go for a round trip. Yeah. This guy, the guy who, um, this guy called Pete Sturgis, anyone who's on Twitter and whatnot, he, he's, yeah. he's a bit of a Yoda character in England around um, uh, youth development. He's very, very good. And he's always said his kind of mantra is a little bit, that if you concentrate on on these three corners, that will come for itself. That's what he says. And he's kind of right. You make it fun, make sure the runner around those and use the brain. The football stuff sort of, sort of looks after itself. You don't realise much that you're in that time. If you're doing fun games, like, I have a few drills there that I do, and you don't even realise that it's actually, 
in relation to that touch. Yeah. They just think it's a game. Exactly. They haven't a clue what they're actually getting from the different parts of foot that they're using. You don't want to know it. Exactly. You think, that, you think of the best players the world ever, and the best players we've produced is a couple of nations. They weren't coached a lot as kids. You bet your life that Darwin wasn't coached until he was in his teens, and Gascoigne, we, we produced a good one. George Best up there, and some good players, they weren't coached and drilled. They learned to play didn't they, through the social side of the game. It's interesting. Good. Anything else? Has that helped? Give you a few things to think about. There's a bit of a whistle stop tour, it's a bit kind of chucking loads of information at you, but uh, hopefully there's a few things to think about. I just said to the Pats that I'll let them have this um, slideshow so they can take the bits off. I've just got to be really careful because if you lot go and win the World Cup, screw <laughs> <laughs> it, honest for John. So don't go out. You're all right, Neil. You wouldn't know what to do, would you? <laughs> Good. It's all right. Yeah. Thanks, so much. Thanks, Thanks, you guys. Thanks, Neil. Thanks, Neil. You take stuff from it. There's a lot of information. Some of it goes in, some of it doesn't. Something will happen in a week or two and you'll say, well, that's it. And you get those little light bulb moments, those little moments and say, that's what you meant by that. And that'll happen. That's great. That's brilliant. So thanks for coming. And I hope you really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, Pat. Thank you.